I uh, got my broker's license, which I thought is what you had to do to get into real estate. And back then, you didn't have to um, have the experience. You could just do the educational part. So I got it right when I turned 18 and didn't make any money my first year. You know, made 10 grand, I think. My second year, I think I made 12 or 15. My third year, though, I met a guy that taught me about mindset and attitude. And I made in the 100,000 range. I mean, 120 or something around that. It's been a long time, so I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was a lot more. And so, you know, fast forward, um, I've owned a couple thousand houses uh, that I, all this was buy and hold. I didn't, you know, I did some flipping, but most of my, most, most of my portfolio was buy and hold. I owned a lot of apartment communities and complexes as well in three states, Denver, Memphis, and then uh, here in Florida. And I, in 19, I'm sorry, in 2006, my portfolio went up $17 million while I slept. And what? yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you want to do the math, it's about $3,800 an hour. Of course I did, you know, and <laughs> yeah. of, course I, of course I thought, I thought that, um, you know, I was a real estate God, but then, you know, when, when you get a big head like that, you know how God of the universe has a habit of smacking you down. That was yeah. 2008 for me. And in 2008, uh, I had 800 houses here in Florida, long-term rentals. I had several apartment communities and I got crushed. And for a lot of reasons, and we can get into the detail of that if you like, but, uh, and I lost it all. It was a, I call them seminars. It was a $50 million seminar for me. And it hard, I mean, that was my conservative net worth and, and I crashed and burned. But the lesson, uh, the lesson I got out of it, and that's the reason I started my podcast, which I know I'm going to have you on in just a short while, which will be cool. Uh, but the reason I started it was what was fascinating is my multifamily did just fine. It cash flowed through that crisis. My single families didn't for a lot of reasons. And I'll touch on some of those real quick. So some of your listeners will be like, you know, if you had that many houses, how come you didn't cash flow? Well, right. the reason being is, first of all, they were spread out. They were two hours north of here and two hours south of here and everywhere in between. So logistically, very, very challenging, very expensive logistically. For example, let's say you have a maintenance call. You've got to fix something. So I've got to send my maintenance guy to check it out. He goes and sees what's wrong, maybe drives an hour to get there, sees what's wrong, has to go to Lowe's, which could be a half hour away, comes back, maybe needs some more parts. And what would take in an apartment complex 30 minutes because you could stockpile parts takes all day. Okay, so the costs were much, much higher. And, you know, leasing is more expensive. Uh, you know, of course, the maintenance, the management, just all of, all of that is much more expensive, very, very cumbersome. And, of course, taxes and insurance here in, in um, Florida are higher, and I'm along the coast, so I've got wind and flood and all these other things on the insurance side. But it, my model just didn't quite cash flow. And so that's why it crashed and burned. And then when I saw the values of my properties, I was at a 30% loan to value in 2007. Just the start of 2007, 30%. I only owed 30 cents on every dollar and I went upside down. Wow. Significantly upside down. That's how far it crashed in my portfolio. So I just, you know, made the hard decision uh, and, and stopped paying and, you know, and had to suffer all that. And my credit, you know, of course, is back now, but it was hell. It was really, it was very tough. 